Current applications in the correction of limb length discrepancy are based on Elizarov's principles of bone regeneration under the influence of gradual distraction and consolidation under the protection of external fixation. Prolonged consolidation time is the most difficult aspect for the patient to tolerate in the femoral lengthening procedure. Because of his stature, which is five foot six, he did not want to lose one inch in height, and therefore he elected for a leg lengthening. Certainly the majority of cases that one applies this technique to have a larger discrepancy than this. Here the nail has to slide within the bone. We don't want it to impact on the hard cancellous bone. This, this is a, a teenager, and so his bone in the distal femur is really quite dense. And if you get a lot of friction against the rod, it will not slide. And in the proximal femur, it's a toss-up. We could squeeze two pins anterior to the nail, but here where the lesser trochanter is, there usually is a fair amount of room. And you can see that we can get one pin there and one pin there. If we put one or two of these holes in and they're in the wrong position, then we've lost all the space for fixation available. If you put one or two wire holes in the wrong position, it really doesn't create any big problem. Rehabilitation is an absolute prerequisite for any lengthening. I don't think any surgeon or patient should consider entering a lengthening program, and especially not of the femur, unless a vigorous physical therapy program can be part of the total package.